Hi all, thank you so much for joining today. Um, please feel free to drop your name, pronouns, and where you're calling in from uh, in the chat. Um, and we can just go ahead and get started. All right. Thank you so much again for joining. This is, I'm so excited to be kicking off the uh, last week of our National Student Leadership Summit. Um, it's been really wonderful. Um, we are all exhausted, but so happy to have seen so much participation uh, over the course of the last two weeks. So I just wanna introduce myself first. Um, my name is Maeve Sheridan. I am the Assistant Director of Campus Organizing here at It's On Us. Um, I got involved in It's On Us during college and actually became an assistant direct, the Assistant Director just last year. Um, after having been a campus organizer and a regional advisor myself. Um, so I was thrilled to take this position and continue my work with them. I started during the pandemic, although it was nor near the tail end of 2020, um, but everything was still virtual and the pivot was still happening in that um, it was very hard for people to sort of figure out how to continue this movement completely online. Um, so my presentation today is gonna to be talking a little bit about um, how it's been possible in the past and how it will be possible in the future to um, make change in a digital age that we're in. And this is my wonderful dog, Walter, in the picture as well. Um, we'll start it off with a content warning. Um, so today I will be talking a little bit about sexual violence, of course, gun violence and police violence as well. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, if at any point you wish to leave or take a break, you are welcome to do so. I will always let you back in. Um, through the waiting room, uh, and I'm going to drop some resources in the chat. Welcome, uh, Felicia, Finn, and Katie. Thank you so much for dropping your names in. Um, <clears throat> this call is being recorded, um, so it's up to you if you want to keep your camera on or off. However, we do ask that uh, you keep on mute during the presentation. Um, but this is a community space, so I'm super excited uh, to have you all in here. Please feel free to have conversations and send que questions in the chat as we go along. I can see the chat so I can uh, stop and answer some questions as we go. If you don't wanna ask in front of the entire community, you can definitely send your questions privately in the chat. And it's a pretty small group right now. So uh, I think we'll try to make it as interactive as possible. So I would love to hear uh, your thoughts as we go along. Without further ado, here we go. Virtual organizing is different from in-person organizing. I don't really have to tell you that most of you know the past year and a half uh, has been almost chaotic is the best way I can put it. Uh, things have completely shifted to Zoom and Google Hangouts and calling on the phone and FaceTiming and just trying to figure out uh, how to have sort of a semblance of a, what we considered a normal life and a normal work life um, at the same time as being completely virtual. I included this tweet because I thought it was very poignant. Does anyone else feel like they literally live inside a computer now? And that was actually only in March of 2020. So they did not even know what was about to hit them. Um, and virtual organizing as well uh, became difficult um, in a social movement because uh, oftentimes um, that sort of face-to-face -face interaction and getting people interested in your cause in your movement uh, was impossible at this point. So to talk a little bit about effective online organizing, um, I wanted to start by saying people are interested. Um, I am an enabling live transition, or excuse me, live transcription, closed captioning. Um, feel free to let me know if it's not working correctly, but it looks like it's, it's going well. Um, so like I said, people are interesting or interested, excuse me. Um, this is a great quote. Social media matters a lot the same way national news and broadcast mattered a lot in the 1960s. It changes how many people are willing to participate. Especially now people are interested. According to a 2019 Pew Research study, 55% um, of US adults now get their news from social media either often uh, or sometimes. And as you can see from here, um, rough up, Roughly half of Americans have been civically act active on social media in the past year, and this was from uh, 2018 as well. So you can imagine it's gone up a lot. 
A great way to organize effectively online is to um, use social media and showcase stories. Building trust and rapport are really vital in driving engagement, which is the first step to taking action. So you can accomplish this by drawing off your online community's emotions. Highlighting the work of real people is a super fantastic way of doing this. This enables your supporters to connect a face to the important work that you're doing. Um, authenticity, this quote says, authenticity is the key to good storytelling for any nonprofit or cause. Transparency is a superpower because it creates authenticity and allows for accountability. Um, a, an example here is one of our actual chapters at Connecticut College um, who did a series over the past year called Masculinity Monday. Um, and they featured students, not necessarily in their group, but just in their school. Um, and had them answer some questions on masculinity, how it affects them, um, and how um, growing up they viewed masculinity. Um, and it's just a great example of how to sort of put a face to your work um, and really build off of the great people that are already around you. And that authenticity that Thorpe this, um, in this uh, quote is pointing to stems directly from your organizations or your group's effective storytelling. Um, ensure you're always introducing the who, what, and why of you. Showcase your organization's impact. Feature stories um, from those of you who serve will humanize your organization and the work it does, and that'll embolden your online supporters to take action. Here are some examples of some social media actions. Um, I really love the example of hijacking a hashtag. Uh, the, it, it requires you to identify an opportunity that's already happening and take advantage of it. So taking over a hashtag that's already being used and coordinating a group of people to tweet using that hashtag with your own message. So a great example is there was a hashtag trending last year, hashtag impeach Biden now. Um, and K-pop fans, so fans of, of K-pop music, use that hashtag um, to post memes and videos of their favorite K-pop stars and just completely took over the hashtag. So yes, it was trending, but when you clicked on it, you didn't see misinformation um, or really anything from um, negative against Biden. In fact, it had nothing to do with it at all. Um, so it was a great way of hijacking that hashtag. And they've done that several times over the course of the past year um, to sort of get rid of some of the misinformation that's been spread on Twitter, um, although it has lowered a lot um, since the banning of a certain someone. Um, another great example of hijacking a hashtag was when SeaWorld was doing an uh, ask and answer question. They did hashtag ask SeaWorld and uh, several groups that were working to hold SeaWorld accountable uh, use the hashtag to ask kind of questions that SeaWorld might not be ready to answer yet. Another option is live tweeting. Um, live tweeting refers to tweeting what's happening at something live, obviously, like a rally, a hearing, or any event um, in real time. It's a really powerful way for you to connect with other people who are tweeting from that event, but also keeping up to date uh, those who aren't at the event um, and sharing your commentary about what's happening. Um, it can be really helpful as well in terms of something that's a little more inaccessible to most, like uh, a trial uh, or a government hearing or anything like that, where it may not be as understandable to everyone who's watching it. Um, so being able to live tweet that and sort of translate some of that jargon can be really helpful for folks. And even just two to three people live tweeting can really make an impact, especially if you let people know ahead of time that you'll be doing it. Photo campaigns as well, pretty self-explanatory, um, but that's when many individual people post photos um, on, on one theme towards one goal. It's a really good way to show how many people support that goal and allows them to sort of share their individual reasons for supporting, which harkens back to that storytelling aspect I was discussing before. And then live video as well. Um, it's really powerful and uh, social media really favors videos and live videos in terms of the algorithm. And people really like to watch video too. I know most of us who have Instagram have gotten a pop-up randomly that says, so-and-so is going live. And you're like, I didn't even know I followed that person. So you kind of can get that uh, 
the algorithm gives you that option to really pop up on people's feeds. Um, it's a really great way to broadcast an event, but also to do sort of interview style things like this example here when Steph Curry interviewed Dr. Fauci, which is an interesting example of two completely different sides of, of you know, um, front facing people talking together about something really important. Um, and there was a ton of attendance, um, including, you know, Barack Obama and several other very famous folks, which really boosted that attendance as well. And something to remember when planning your online action like this is to treat the online action the same way you treat any action. So have a goal and a plan to meet it. Uh, that require that includes recruitment, preparation, and any other goals like do you want media attention? Are you putting pressure on your target? Recruit your top supporters. So identify people of influence on social media and recruit them to play a role as well. Activate your base. Plan that outreach to your base, make sure they can participate, send out an email, share, um, having them share, like, or comment on those posts. Um, don't just hope people participate, ask them to be a part of it. Most people are interested as well. And make it easy to take action. People are way more likely to take action online if you provide a sample post, they can copy and paste and make their own as well. Create a social media guide for your actions so people have all that information they need to be sure they're tagging the right target, using the right hashtag, and staying on message. A few Instagram posting ideas from some of our own groups. Um, get to know members. People really want to envision themselves being a part of your organization. The best way that they can do that is to get to know your members. Um, doing member spotlights, so gathering a few inter question, interview questions, sharing them with new members, um, and creating graphics um, are a really great way to showcase them on social media. And Kristen Schallert right here is uh, an example, and she is actually our regional advisor this year as well as being the president of It's On Us at Boston University. Um, and she introduced herself um, on their Instagram. So that's a great example of getting to know members. Upcoming events. So an important part of social media, as we all know, is promoting upcoming events. Um, use that social media presence to share flyers and information on the events you're hosting. Um, people will, you know, still respond to visual flyers on campus and Facebook group, or excuse me, Facebook event invites. Um, but you can get a ton of publicity for your upcoming events with a really well-timed social media update. Here is a great example from our previous regional advisor from last year, Gia, who reposted uh, a, our national orgs um, graphic uh, about her presentation during um, our spring week of action. So not only was she were they connecting it with the national organization, but also, again, promoting that event and putting a face uh, to the name of the person who would be presenting. And lastly, another option um, would be members repping your group, gathering up a few of your members um, when they're wearing t-shirts, uh, or in this case, she had It's On Us written on her hand, um, and take photos, post those on social media. And then it's on us uh, at Texas Christian University to did a great, use a great idea, which was to say, feel free to take your own photo like this and tag us, let your friends know why it's on us. So bringing um, non-members in as well. So now we'll get to the interesting part, some examples. So Black Lives Matter. Not shocking uh, that, that would be, this would be my first example as over the last year, it has been um, an incredibly large, it's had an incredibly large presence on the internet, um, but it sort of started um, back in 2013 uh, when George Zimmerman was actually acquitted of all charges in the fatal shooting of Trayvon Martin, who was an unarmed black 17 year old. Immediately, many Twitter users aired their disappointment and reminded the world that Black Lives Matter using that hashtag. And it picked up a little steam along the way. Um, but then in 2014, a grand jury declined to indict Darren Wilson in the fatal shooting of Michael Brown, another unarmed black man. And the hashtag sort of entered that mainstream. Um, a great quote that I read was, black people have been having these conversations in our living rooms, but social media has invited our followers and millions of them into our living rooms to have this conversation with us in a sense. 
that's a really beautiful way of explaining how you know social media can actually be a really powerful tool in advocacy work. Um, and in a study beyond the hashtags, um, they examined 40 million tweets relating to Ferguson and Black Lives Matter, and it determined that Michael Brown's killing paired with the protests and media attention that followed propelled Black Lives Matter from an expression into a national movement. Even went so far um, to really change things in terms of uh, national and visual, the visual, <laughs> excuse me, let me get my words straight. It really changed things in terms of showing it on a national scale. For example, in December of that year, Hillary Clinton used the phrase in a speech delivered at a human rights gala, it was referred to in television programs, for example, an episode of Law and Order, the finale of Empire. Um, and then in, by January, 2015, the American Dialect Society had actually declared hashtag Black Lives Matter as their word of the year. And then we found ourselves uh, ourselves last year uh, at the killing of George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man who was murdered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, unarmed while being arrested on suspicion of using a counterfeit $20 bill. Derek Chauvin, a white police officer with the Minneapolis Police Department, knelt on Floyd's neck for over nine minutes after he was handcuffed and lying face down. Many of us saw that video. It was really hard to watch, um, but it really sparked a huge movement and in fact turned this into the largest movement potentially since the civil rights movement. Posts increased exponentially um, and previous spikes in content sort of barely registered in comparison uh, to last year's use of the hashtag. The small map in the corner of this photo, which is a little blurry, but you can still see um, how prominent these, these dots are. This is how many protests happened over the world last summer. Um, after the killing of George Floyd. So as of April 30th, 2021, it's actually been used in more than 25 million original Twitter posts, which collectively have garnered approximately 444 billion likes, retweets, comments, or quotes, which is about 17,000 engagements per post. An analysis of more than uh, 50 million Twitter posts between January 28th, 2013, at the beginning of, of the movement, and April 30th, 2021, found that the outpouring of online support for Black Lives Matter following George Floyd's killing actually resulted in a lasting shift and a more vocal and engaged online public, with really no evidence of hashtag co-optation by more conservative users over the past year. While the Black Lives Matter movement impact on the policy landscape remains uncertain, its online presence is undoubtedly stronger. So it's a great example of a movement that can last and is making an impact beyond the internet. As we know, Derek Chauvin was convicted, which, you know, there's only a semblance of justice that we can get from that, um, but it is definitely more than we would have expected back in 2013 or 2014. Another example I wanted to highlight is hashtag Me Too. Um, in tw 2006, Tarana Burke founded the nonprofit organization Just Be Inc., which serves survivors of sexual harassment and abuse. And Burke called her nonprofit's movement Me Too. And then on October 16, 2017, the hashtag MeToo movement was born on Twitter after uh, Alyssa Milano encouraged people to share their stories of sexual harassment and abuse. This is a, a picture of her tweet. And if you can see, there are a lot of likes and there are a lot of retweets, but there are exponentially more responses. Um, and the impact of the MeToo movement has gone far beyond powerful men losing their jobs. States have begun to ban non-disclosure agreements that cover sexual harassment. New York expanded sexual harassment law to cover independent contractors in 2018 and improved protection for domestic workers in 2019. California broadened its law in 2018 to offer protections for people harassed and an expanded set of business relationships, um, including notably relationships with producers. And the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund has helped over 3,600 people seek justice um, in, quote, after their sexual uh, abuse or assault. This is a uh, analysis by Pew Research of the hashtag MeToo 
the Me Too hashtag, which has been used, uh, which had been at this point used um, roughly 19 million times on Twitter in the year following Alyssa Milano's first tweet. Um, and the, as it says, the usage often surged around news events, as we would expect. Harvey Weinstein uh, resigning, um, Time Magazine naming the hashtag Me Too activist as Persons of the Year, um, Leslie Moon, Moons resigning, and Brett Kavanaugh and the Christine Blasey Ford um, test, testifying before the Senate. Another example is the hashtag Never Again movement. Um, on February 14th, uh, in 2018, a former Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School student who will not be named because I would prefer to focus on the names of those who were killed. He opened fire at the school in Parkland, Florida, killing 17 students and staff members, all of whom are pictured below. Um, as the rampage really unfolded, uh, a student, David Hogg, who is on the right in this photo on Time magazine, um, <clears throat> began to actually film his and fellow students demand for change while hiding in a dark closet. He said, I call legislators of this country to take action and stop this from happening. Thousands of people have died from gun violence and it's time to take a stand. Forget the NRA, forget the political backing, take a stance for human lives, for children's lives. It was an incredibly poignant you know, video and really, really hard to watch um, as he was literally filming it while there was a shooting happening in his school. Only four days after the school shooting, um, the activist movement that emerged in its aftermath had actu actually had a name, uh, never again, a policy goal, stricter background checks for gun buyers, and a plan for a nationwide protest, um, a March for Our Lives, which was scheduled for March 24th. On February 15th, students David Hogg and Jacqueline Corrin called on lawmakers to take action on gun control during live interviews on CNN and MSNBC. And on social media, his, um, a fellow student, Cameron Caskey, launched the hashtag never again. And during the March for Our Lives on March 24th, 2018, hundreds of thousands rallied across the United States in the student-led March for Our Lives demonstration against gun violence. Uh, the students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas spoke before supporters in Washington, D.C., along with activists, politicians, and celebrities. This photo is um, a really beautiful photo that many, you know, sh showed in the aftermath of student Emma Gonzalez having a moment of silence uh, for her fellow classmates and teachers who were victims um, of this attack. And lastly, obviously, I'm going to highlight it's, it's on us. Um, the hashtag specifically it's on us also uh, was able to reach uh, many, many more folks um, after February 28th, 2016, when Lady Gaga actually took sexual abuse survivors on stage during her Oscar performance um, for It's On Us. Um, we reported almost 40,000 new pledges in that time, um, and the hashtag It's On Us reached 348.67 million impressions, which was incredible. Lady Gaga is amazing, and we love that, but our students are really the backbone um, of our organization. And here are, over the past year, a few really good examples of how our students have um, made a difference and, and really stepped up on their campuses, even while being completely virtual. Um, up in the top here, we have Marist College, uh, who actually was able to get a incredibly large garnering of online support on a petition um, to get their students, or excuse me, to get their school um, to address sexual assault and domestic abuse on and off campus and condemn their administration's response to some of the, the recent incidents. Um, this is an article from their press conference they held um, during the spring of this year. Boston University as well um, started their It's On Us chapter just the past year and garnered a ton of support, is one of our most active chapters. Um, and during the uh, Spring Week of Action and the month of Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which is April, they partnered with their student government and Greek Life to host a bunch of uh, events throughout the month and got a ton of great 
um, interaction and donations uh, for RAIN. And then Baylor as well did um, a socially distanced, uh, however, in-person um, uh, presentation um, an installation, an art installation called What Were You Wearing Waco? Um, and some people have seen this kind of uh, dem demonstration, but it's an exhibit that displays actual outfits and also recreations that survivors were wearing when they were sexually assaulted. Um, it's a beautiful and super intense art installation. Um, and it was really wonderful to see them be able to show that even during a time when we had to be separated physically. And research has found that online support can translate into meaningful online, offline action. Um, this is particularly true of young people who unsurprisingly are disproportionately represented in online political conversations, having grown up with the internet. Um, and I think generations um, like Gen Z and, and late millennials are often scoffed at or looked down upon for being this um, sensitive internet generation. But really um, what we're seeing over the past several years is incredible amounts of change that wouldn't be possible without these young generations um, really rallying together online and in person and stepping up to fix some of these systemic issues um, and protest uh, and change things um, just from the ground up. Um, so It's On Us is, is an example of that as well because our students are incredible um, and are doing such great work while simultaneously being college students and doing a million other things. We'll talk a little bit about ways to connect. Um, in terms of online connection, um, online petitions, like Mar I said, Marist University, excuse me, Marist College did this as well. Um, but it can really reach people that you don't know um, if it's shared well throughout your network. Um, you know, if you share it with 10 people and each of those people shares it with one person and each of those people shares it with one person, you can really spread that petition um, out much farther than you could um, if you were just walking around trying to get people to sign. Facebook events will help in terms of, of sharing events with people who have already liked your group um, and people you're personally friends with. However, it can also be like an online petition if you have people invite their friends or share with their friends. Email, um, the only downside email is you do have to have email addresses collected, um, but email is still a really key way of getting information out um, and keeping people engaged. Uh, especially uh, over the past year when most of us have lived on our email. <laughs> text messages are great as well. Um, you do need cell phone numbers, but texting can be great um, from different various platforms because most of us uh, are quick to check our text message versus uh, our emails. And then Facebook ads as well. Although it costs some money, um, it can help you get contact information and it can really reach people that you don't know and couldn't necessarily uh, reach otherwise. Um, as you can select demographics um, like location, age, um, school, uh, interests um, of any of the folks you wanna reach. So when we're talking about email, you know, there are a lot of ways to write a good email, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the core elements of writing great email. So have a goal for your email. Ask the people reading your email to take one action. Don't include a laundry list of actions for them to take. Focus on just one to two actions and ask two to three times in your email. It's okay to repeat yourself. Um, the more you, know, you, you, sh you remind people what you want them to do, the more likely they are to click and do that. Use your campaign message. So ours obviously is it's on us. Um, our message is the basis of all of our communications online and offline. So don't be afraid to repeat your message um, in every email. Write for your audience. So remember that while your supporters um, might not want to know every single detail of every issue, they care about your community's health. Uh, so the first line of your email should drop people in and make them want to keep reading. 
one may one way to keep people engaged is by telling a story. Some groups um, that I have seen, student groups have had each member take a turn in sharing their personal story related to it's on us. And finally, use simple, clear language. Make your email understandable and skimmable. Um, write so that you know a third grader, a middle schooler uh, could understand what you're saying. Try not to use a ton of jargon um, and break up big paragraphs into bite-sized chunks. Um, it's not it's not demeaning to uh, write your emails in a very simple format. What it is is understanding that we all get a hundred emails a day. Um, and you really want to draw people in. Samantha asked a really great question in the chat. She asked, um, how can you continue to reach out and remind people without feeling like you are badgering them? And that really comes down to obviously not sending 15 emails in the same day, reminding them of the same thing, planning out a calendar um, of when you're going to be sending those emails, but also kind of accepting the fact that it's okay to feel like you're badgering someone. Um, I work with college students, so I have to, I do have to badger them. Um, and I had to sort of uh, get used to the fact that what I'm doing is just reminding them of something that I think that they would benefit from. Um, so continue, you know, having a, a plan set in advance can help you, you know, feel comfortable with the schedule you're, you're putting out for sending those emails. Um, but definitely, sort of accept the fact that when you're trying to get someone to do something, you gotta keep bothering them to do it until they do it. Especially when we're, when we're thinking about um, advocacy work and, and things uh, that really mean a lot to a community's health um, and society's health. It's okay to push people uh, to support your cause. I hope that answered that. Feel free to ask more in the chat. So here's some online tools for organizing. Um, Google Forms, Typeform, and Doodle uh, are always a great way uh, to poll people. Um, it's challenging to schedule meetings, um, especially with college students around their busy schedules. Um, so instead of guessing when people are available, you can poll um, your members of your, of your group's organization uh, with Google Forms, Typeform, or Doodle, um, which will all help they're all free options and they'll all help you create a form with dates and times and ask uh, your members to check off which times they're free to meet. Google Forms and Typeform especially are also useful for gauging opinions and collecting some anonymous feedback that you might not necessarily get when asking outright. Google Calendar is incredible for scheduling. Um, it can be used for so much more than just keeping track of your own schedules, however. You can create events for recurring meetings and invite your members to those events. Um, they can RSVP to the event, add it to their own Google Calendar. Um, and then actually, you can also integrate Google um, Hangouts or, or Google Meet, um, which is similar to Zoom. It's just sort of the Google platform of that. Zoom, however, is, as we all know, one of the best ways for hosting synchronous meetings. We are on Zoom right now. Um, it's particularly useful for some reoccurring meetings. You can um, have a scheduling, there's a scheduling feature in Zoom um, and those regular meeting times increase productivity and encourage members to make a commitment to attend. Google shared drives and folders um, for documents are awesome. Uh, you can share uh, folders with all different types of documents um, to allow people to look at, but shared drives as well are great because um, they're um, different. They're not sharing from your own personal drive. You can set access levels and then no single user owns that shared drive. So you can all contribute uh, as a group. And then finally, Vibely is a great uh, platform for connecting with your members. And I'm obviously shouting it out because we do have our own Vibely community. Uh, it is a new online community organizing platform that I am super excited about. I kind of describe it as like a mix between Meetup, Zoom, GroupMe, and Slack. You can do so much on Vibly. Um, the link up here, which is bit.ly slash IOU Vibly um, to sign up for free um, is a way to access our community. Um, and we have several different circles, which are 
as you can see here, communities to uh, chat amongst yourselves to talk about, you know, what you what you're doing, any tips and tricks you have, um, just in general discuss uh, all the work that that we do. Um, we also have challenges as well, um, and you can do, as you can see, um, video chats similar to Zoom direct, directly from the platform. Um, the app on your phone is awesome. It's just a really cool way for everyone to connect. So anyone who is part of the SNS community in any way, shape, or form can join um, with the link that Kevin, my wonderful intern, uh, actually just posted in the chat as well. Um, so feel free to sign up and see what it's all about. So with that, I wanted to try out something. Um, if everyone could, if they have access to a phone um, or on your computer, just go to slido.com or scan the QR code there um, and then enter the number um, right there. So I'll just do .com. Posted that in the chat and then the number is 536-204. 'm pull it up here. So uh, it should pop up. Um, it's active right now, but uh, I wanted to see what words come to mind for you all when you think of the online social movements that I talked about uh, during this presentation. Um, so Black Lives Matter, Never Again, Me Too, and It's On Us as well. Explosive empowering, those are great. Um, explosive is a, is a really great way of phrasing that because it does feel like some, you know, especially for Black Lives Matter over the past year, the, the support online is just, was incredible. Power to the people, advocacy, creating community, communal, yep. It is a really wonderful way of, um, creating a community across the entire world. Um, I was recently talking to my mom, actually, who I believe is on here, uh, about how she couldn't, you know, imagine being able to do what we can do right now on our phones and on the internet, you know, 30 years ago. And it's, it's true, the, the ability to progress these incredible social movements um, is really due in part to our ability to connect across the world. Important, revolutionary, youth, awesome. I'm so excited to see all these words. I do think uh, those are very accurate descriptions. And one more poll. Let's see, I'm just go to the next one. Um, I wanted to see if anyone has any ideas you have or things you've seen done uh, for online movements that we might, I might have um, already addressed, but also like um, hashtag hijacking, um, uh, photo campaigns. Um, but I wanted to see if anyone had any of their own ideas or have seen things as well that they felt were really impactful uh, in on online movements. I'll give everyone a, a few minutes to figure that out. live streams, yep. And that was also um, during the protesting last year, incredibly important um, to document um, a lot of the actual violence that, that broke out um, from the um, police at, you know, um, some of those protests. Go to a rally, absolutely. I started organizing my chapter in the International Collaborative Bits on Us meeting with chapter across America and Canada. That's awesome. Um, collecting those different creative ideas through that. That's really wonderful. Um, whoever commented that, feel free to email me. I would love to hear more about that. I'll put my email in the chat. Reposting graphics on Instagram stories. Absolutely. Um, sometimes it's a little easier Okay, love that, Samantha. Um, yeah, sometimes it's a little easier to uh, 
just like tap through Instagram stories. So reposting stuff that you see um, can really grab people's attention as well. Yep, getting mainstream media attention. Um, and it now mainstream media, quote unquote, will uh, look at social media to try to get some of their information. So these big movements that have gotten started on social media um, very quickly um, get brought to sort of the traditional media outlets as well. Those are all great ideas slash things you have seen done. Um, feel free to keep posting, but I also wanted to um, be mindful of your time and give you all a few minutes to post any questions you might have in the chat or any thoughts you have about the presentation. No pressure. Um, you are also welcome to email me as uh, I posted in the chat um, whenever you'd like. We can talk more about this. And I definitely suggest uh, going onto our website, it's on us.org slash summit21 um, to sign up for the rest of the incredible presentations this week. It is our last week um, and it's going to be amazing. We actually have, well, I think one of the coolest presentations ever um, coming up uh, with Justin Baldoni. Um, and he is going to be talking with our executive director, Tracy, about his new book and just in general about masculinity. Um, and he will be talking to her tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. So definitely check that out, sign up. Um, and thank you all so much for joining me today. I'm gonna give just a few minutes if you have any questions um, and then I'll let everyone go. Um, I have a question. Sure. Uh, if we wanted to get more involved with It's On Us in the future, what's like the best way to do that? Obviously the other meetings that are coming up, but um, I just want to know if there's anything else. Yeah, good question. Thanks, Noah. Um, no generally, we, are ha we have current college students, uh, we have uh, availability for them to directly get involved uh, in terms of like creating chapters on their campus um, or being student leaders with us. But we also have tons of events that we throw throughout the year um, and you know actions that you can take. Um, so signing up and taking the pledge online, which is sort of like our base level um, get involved thing, which I'm gonna post in the chat right now, um, is a great, great way to get started. But then also we would love to have anyone on that Bible community um, to see events in their area coming up um, you know, protests, rallies, any online actions they can take. Um, and you don't have to be a student that is directly involved uh, to sign up for our Bible community. Thank you. Hope that helps. Thank you, Noah. All right, thank you all so much for joining. Um, have a great rest of your day. Um, enjoy your Monday. Um, and I hope to see you all uh, throughout the week at some of our new presentations.